I'd just like to formally welcome everyone to SAS 21. Um, and like Matt, I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the lands across Australia on which our members live and work and to their elders past, present and future. And also like to acknowledge Na Iwi Māori as Tangata Whenua and a Treaty of Waitangi Partners in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Now, I've got a lot of people to thank for making SAS21 happen. Um, I've chaired this session, but in fact, I was not on the organising committee. And these guys that you see, I hope in front of you soon, um, were um, responsible for putting this whole programme together. So Adam Rayhack, Matthew Humar, David Vokes, Kirsten Fraser, Nick, um, have really made this programme what it is and got the faculty together. Really thankful to all the panellists who um, have come on this morning and who you will see this afternoon and to the Simpact crew for putting on this live, live stream event um, on a shoestring budget, which is what we need as a fledgling society. So major thanks to all of those people. Also, thanks to all of you for tuning in. And if you're watching this after the event, for taking the time to watch the recordings. Um, also must thank our sponsors um, who have put a little bit of money behind the event and without which we couldn't have run it. So Fisher and Paykel, Glidescope, Verathon, Ambu, uh, MSD and GE. And special thanks to CODA, the guys from CODA, who, um, which is a, a conference which is happening next year, which I'm going to tell you a little bit more about later. Um, so what have we achieved as a society since we were founded in 2019? Well, what I'm really proud to announce to you and to show you is that our membership, which is over 350 members now, is purely interprofessional. We've got a really even spread of all airway practitioners. Um, and I'm very proud of that. Also, we are spread around both of our two nations from all over Australia and New Zealand. So a real variety of people have joined. One of the things that we're really proud of in the last couple of years is um, our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, we very early on put out some um, a, a, a consensus statement on what we believed was safe, safe airway management for the, the adult COVID-19 population. Um, it was a really collaborative project with about 14 of us writing it, um, also seeking feedback and um, making changes based on feedback from members. The guidelines were widely endorsed um, by uh, colleges and societies across Australia and New Zealand and were really well received internationally. They've been cited 374 times as of today um, and have had somewhere in the region of 300,000 social media impressions. So really have been seen around the world. The infographics and the checklist that we produced have been very, very popular and taken up. And we surveyed um, ICUs last year and found that uh, more than half of the ICUs in Australia and New Zealand were using our infographics, guidelines, and uh, checklist, which we're really proud of. The video um, has been viewed over 1,400 times. On that note, our social media presence um, is, is ever growing. We've got a two, two and a half thousand Twitter followers, um, 360 YouTube subscribers, and our videos have been viewed nearly 2,000 times. We've produced a, a newsletter, which has been really excellent resource and uh, fascinating, and thanks to Dan, and Scott, who are our trainee reps for putting that together. And we've had three, I think, editions of that now, and there's more to come. And then the Airwaves uh, live stream events, which we've had three of now, which have been really popular and viewed many hundreds of times um, after the event. Um, and they were thanks to Nick for putting those together. We've entered into partnerships with a lot of organizations, um, done some small projects um, and collaborated on each other's guidelines, things like that. But the, been involved in surveys and some small research projects. So you can see them all on the screen there. And we look forward to partnerships in the future with other organizations. The annual scientific meeting, you're present at 20, SAS 21. SAS 2020 was, um, we booked it a couple of times and had to cancel it. Um, I'm really pleased that this event's gone ahead. And what I'm really excited to announce is that next year there will be a face-to-face -face event. So in Melbourne, at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Center, on the 11th and 12th of September 22 uh, is the, are the SAS events, followed by CODA conference on the 13th and 14th. So the, we'll have SAS 22, a fully interactive event um, on the Sunday, the 11th of September. And on the Monday, in conjunction with CODA, we're putting on airway workshops in the morning and the afternoon. And we'll have a stunning faculty, a stellar faculty of 
of teachers to take you through some airway skills um, and we'll have high access to one head per per participant and really it will be a really excellent airway workshop. So what's in the future? Well, this is our motley crew of um, board members and clinical council members and there's a lot of exciting projects in the pipeline in the, most of them in the planning stages a lot of them on hold because of covid but um, there's lots to come and if you want to get involved please get in contact because we'd love to have you on board finally we can't run without members so we ask a small amount for a membership fee each year um, and it's because any society has overheads and we cannot run without a membership just giving us a small amount of money each year so please follow this qr code or go to safeairwaysociety.org forward slash join and join up. If you've enjoyed this event, please do us the favor of, uh, of joining us and we'd love to have you as a member. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much.